Good evening, Regina. Good evening, Anthony. Bless you, man of God. We miss you. Blessings to you. Good evening, Jennifer. Blessings to you. Good evening, Felicia. Blessings to you. Good evening, D. Arthur. Blessings to you. Good evening, Shakina. Blessings to you. Love you, Jennifer. Blessings to you all. Good evening. Blessings. Blessings. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Thank you. Blessings. Good. Pray everything is uh, good with you, Anthony. Bless you, Shakina. Love you. Yes, had a good day. Just was, I've been moving all day. God bless you, Evangelist Carolyn. Blessings to you, woman of God. Yeah, I've been moving all day long. I've been moving all day long. I actually... Uh, would be on Facebook and Periscope, but I've been moving so much today, I didn't have time to uh, charge up my... God bless you, Phil. All right, well, let's get started tonight. Let's get started tonight. If you're glad to be alive, just tap that screen. Let me see those hearts. If you're glad to be alive, tap that screen. Let me see those hearts. Praying for some friends of mine. They tested positive. Okay. Father, we knit our faith with Jennifer concerning her friends who have tested positive. We thank you that you destroy every yoke. You lift every burden. We speak a word of healing, wholeness, and health. In Jesus' name. All right. When you're ready, say ready. When you're ready, say ready. And then I'm going to speak a blessing over you and your family. When you're ready, say ready. God bless you, Aisha. Blessings to you. Pray you had a wonderful day. When you're ready, say ready. I'll speak a blessing over you. Good, good, excellent. Father, we thank you tonight for each person that's coming on and those who will be coming on. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Awesome. All right, well, let's go tonight. We want to rejoice with one of the young ladies that come on with us on Periscope and Facebook. She is now the new owner of a home, so we want to thank God for Cheyenne. Uh, they moved into their home today. Her closing was today, so we rejoice. We've been praying and thanking God in advance, so she moved into her home. So we're celebrating with her tonight, and we're believing God that we will have some more homeowners on here pretty soon. God bless you, Glory. Blessings to you, woman of God. Come on, somebody shout, I'm next. Come on, somebody shout, I'm next. Lord, have mercy. Yes, you are. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Good. I agree with you, Evangelist Carolyn. I agree with you, Jennifer. Yes. 
I agree with you. Amen. All right, let's go. Let, let's see what we want to discuss tonight. Since tonight is kind of a different, uh, tonight is training. There you go. I agree with you, Regina. Good evening, Renee. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Blessings to you. There you go, Gloria. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are next. Thank you, Lord. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. Just lift your hands. I want to speak something over you. Lift up your hand. I want to speak something over you. <clears throat> I want to declare something over you. Just lift up your hand right where you are. Lift up your hand. I pray. Good, Shekinah. Good, Renee. God bless you, Kiana. Blessings to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. All right, good. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. Just lift your hand. I want to speak something over you. I pray that the Lord will send overwhelming blessings from unexpected places. I pray that God will send you overwhelming blessings from unexpected places. Somebody receive that. I pray that God will send you overwhelming blessings from unexpected places. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. I pray that God will send you overwhelming blessings from unexpected places. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Well, let's go tonight. Let's go. We've been talking about those who receive miracles. We've been talking about those who receive miracles. Good evening, Lenore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lenore, I pray that God send you overwhelming blessings from unexpected places. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Write that word down, please. Write that word down, bless. Capital letters, bless. Thank you, Shekinah. Write that word down, capital letters, bless. Write that word down, bless. Capital letters. Excellent. Hey, bless you, Rose. I love you. Bless you, woman of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Write that word down, bless. The word bless means empowered to prosper. The word bless means empowered to prosper empowered to prosper the word bless means empowered to prosper father we thank you for evangelist carolyn sowing tonight we speak over her increase abundance and favor we thank you for opening up doors that no man can shut and shutting doors that no man can open father i thank you for her consistent uh sowing this month and i thank you that you promised you said you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And we thank you that you shall reward her in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Yes, the word bless, Rene, means empowered to prosper. Okay. Empowered to prosper. Come on, make this confession. God has empowered me to prosper. Come on. God has empowered me to prosper. Come on. God has empowered me to prosper. 
Good, 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 Renee. Good. God has empowered me to prosper. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Evangelist Carolyn. Excellent. Shakina. Excellent. Anthony. Renea. Excellent. God has empowered me to prosper. Okay, let me take you, uh, Lord have mercy. Let me take you to John chapter 5, please. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 1. Let's go there tonight. Okay, John chapter 5, verse number 1. Okay. Let's go there tonight. John chapter 5, verse number 1. John chapter 5, verse number 1. John chapter 5, verse number 1. And it reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at the at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Write down the number five, please. The number five is the number of grace or favor. Five is the number of grace or favor. Write that number down. Five is symbolic of grace or favor. Okay. Five is symbolic of grace or favor. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you, Shakina. Five is the number of grace and favor. Good. Excellent. Now watch this. Watch this. They're in a place called Bethesda. Okay. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. God bless you, Lydell. Blessings to you. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We're in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Thank you, Shekinah. Verse number 2. I'll read it again. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Bethesda means house of mercy, and five is the number of grace or favor. Okay? So we're in a place of grace and favor. Before we move on, can we thank God for grace and mercy. Come on. Can we thank God for grace and mercy? Can anyone be honest tonight that the only reason we are here tonight, Rene, is because of his grace and because of his mercy? And I want to pause tonight and thank him for his mercy. When I look back over my life, I just want to thank him how he kept me, he kept my mind, he kept my family. He, God is so good. I just want to thank him for his grace and his mercy. I don't know what's following you, but every time I turn around, Lord have mercy, grace and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Come on, somebody thank God for that. Did you hear that, Shekinah? The Bible said that grace 
and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. My God, the bill connect, bill collector is not following you. Grace and mercy. The enemy is not following you. Every time you turn around, thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. And guess what, Regina? His mercies are new every morning. So if you think uh, you can't make it through the night and you think it's going to run out, they'll come in brand new in the morning. All right, here we go. So we're in a place of grace and mercy. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Shakina. Watch this. We're in a place of grace and mercy. Verse number three. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Okay. Write this down, please. Impotent folk. Blind. Halt. Withered, okay. Notice the people that's at this pool, Anthony. Notice the people that's there, the author. Blind, halt, withered, okay. Good. Watch this, Jennifer. Notice the people that's at the pool. They're blind, halt, withered. Okay. So on the porch, there's a lot of people there, blind, halt, and withered. Write this down. Number one, we want to talk tonight. Number one, God bless you. Tasha, blessings to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay. Write this down, please. Number one, watch this for now. Number one, check your surrounding. Come on. Check your surrounding. Make sure you are surrounded by the right people, Lenore. This man was at the pool on the porch and his company was blind people, halt people, withered people, okay? You've got to check your surroundings. Thank you, Shakina. You've got to know who you are connected to. You've got to know who you are connected to. Good, Glory. Good. You've got to know who you're connected to. Okay. You've got to know who you are connected to. Good. Let's look at this. <clears throat> let, let, let's look at this. Okay. Know who you connect. Good. Good. Okay. Number one. The first type of people that is around him, the scripture said blind. Write this down, no vision. You cannot afford, Glory, to be connected to people with no vision. Lenore, you cannot afford to be connected to people with no vision. You cannot connect with people in right there with no vision. Rene, you want too much from God. You want too much out of life to be connected to someone without vision. Rosa, check your surroundings. This man is at the pool. Okay. He's around, number one, people who are blind, no vision, people who are halt, undecided. Come on, write that down. 
So the first group of people, Tasha, is blind, no vision. Second group of people is halt. That means they are undecided, undecided, undecisive people. Okay. And then the third group of people are withered, dry people, dry people. Okay. So he has people with no vision, people who are undecided, and then people who are dry. Okay. And all of them, all of them are doing the same thing. All of them are doing the same thing, Glory. All of them are doing the same thing, Aisha. They are waiting. All of them are doing the same thing, the author. All of them are doing the same thing, Lenore. They are waiting for the moving of the water. Okay? They are waiting for something to happen. Okay? Two types of people. Either you're going to be the one who makes something happen or you're waiting for something to happen. Let me say that again. Either you're going to be the person that makes something happen, or you're going to be waiting on something to happen. I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind that I am going to be the one that makes things happen. You can sit around and wait for something to happen, or you can be an agent of change. You can be the one that makes things happen. Do I have anybody on Periscope tonight who says, I'm not sitting around waiting on something to happen. I'm going to make something happen. I'm not sitting around waiting on someone to give me a handout. I'm going to make something happen. Why? Because you have been empowered to prosper. Jennifer, you don't have to wait because God has already empowered you to prosper. You don't have to wait, Tasha. God has already empowered you to prosper. Evangelist Carolyn, God has empowered you to prosper. Good. There you go. Good. There you go. There you go. Watch this. Watch the people here. He's around. Verse number four. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Okay? Watch this. They are waiting on someone, an angel, to come down trouble the water and then whoever steps in first will be made whole from whatever disease they have. So they're waiting on something that only happens once a year. Hear me? They're waiting on something that only happens once a year to change their life. Verse number five. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. Write that number down, 38. Lenore, no wonder he was there so long. No wonder he stayed in the same situation for 38 years, because he surrounded himself with people who could not help themselves. Felicia, he surrounded himself with people who could not help themselves. Make sure you are not the smartest one in your group. 
if you are the smartest one in your group, you need another group. When was the last time you checked to see who was in your group? Regina, if you are the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. You need to be around people who are going to challenge you. You need to be around people who know more than you, have more than you. Come on, write that down. You need to be around people who know more than you, have more than you. Come on, you keep hanging around the hanging around people uh because when people watch this people who have more than you for the majority will not be jealous of you people who have more are not jealous of you it's the people who are on your level it's the people who don't have anything that are jealous of you but the people who have more than you, most of the time, they will encourage you that you can get more. Because you keep hanging around the wrong people. So every time you ask somebody, can I do this? They say no. Why? Because they never did it. You keep telling people, one day I'm going to have a house. One day I'm going to be a millionaire. And the people in your circle don't believe you. You know why they don't believe you? Because they don't have a house. You know why they don't believe you? Because they're not a millionaire. You've got to get around people who are already where you're trying to go. you got to get around people, Regina, who are already where you're trying to go. Get around people who already own a business, and they'll show you how to do it. Stop hanging around people who cannot help themselves. Come on, if you receive and tap that screen. Come on, if you receive and tap that screen. This man stayed stuck for 38 years because he was connected to the wrong people. Shakina, this man stayed stuck for 38 years because he was connected to the wrong people. Kiana, this man stayed stuck for 38 years because he was connected to the wrong people. Verse 6. And when Jesus saw him, Lord have mercy, I received this word, started applying it to myself. I took the note. Oh, awesome. And I'm now, hey, watch out. Watch out, Kiana. I am so excited for you. Awesome. On oh, awesome, Kiana. Awesome. Boy, that brings tears to my eyes. Awesome. Hallelujah. My God. Awesome. You ever notice, you ever notice when you meet people and Renee, people will tell you how hard it is. People will tell you how hard it is to do something. They already did it. But when you say, well, how do I do it? Well, it's so hard. It's a lot of paperwork. It's this and that. But they already did it. And instead of them trying to help you, they try to discourage you. That's when you know they're the wrong people. The right people will push you. The right people will push you. The right people will give you the information. The right people will celebrate you. And last week we talked about, I shared with you all, I shared with you all about becoming a notary and, and having a business. And Kiana got the information. Now she's doing it. Now she's about to start the business. Come on. Come on. Let's rejoice with Kiana. Let's rejoice with Kiana. She took the information. She put it to work. Come on. Let's rejoice with Kiana. She took the information and put it to work. We just talked about this last week. We just talked about this last week about the notary class, the training. She did it. She took the notary class, took the training, and now she's working. She said, I'm working on starting my business up. Good. And Father, we pray that you would give. Uh, we thank you that she has favor with you and with man. We thank you for giving her favor with title companies. We thank you for opening the way, making the way clear in Jesus' name. Okay, good. Watch this. Verse number six. 
Verse number six. But when Jesus saw him lie. Write that down, please. Write that word down. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, when Jesus saw him lie. Lord have mercy. When Jesus saw him lie. Can I show you something? L-I-E. When Jesus saw him lie. When Jesus saw him, Lenore. Watch this. His situation. Not just Jesus saw him lie or lay there, Regina. Jesus saw him lie. He was lying to himself. His situation was lying to him. Come on. If you find yourself in a position that goes against the will of God, your situation is lying to you. If you're in a place, if you're in a place that is not the will of God for your life, your situation is lying. It's telling you you have to settle for that. That is a lie. This man has now been in a situation for 38 years. 38 years. And the Bible said Jesus knew he had been in that situation a long time. Come on, somebody. Do me a favor. Put this in capital letters. I've been here too long. You don't have to talk about what here is, but I need someone to be honest and say, I've been here too long. Whatever that place is, you've got to speak it out. I've been here too long. I've been in struggle too long. Come on. I've been in lack too long. I've been in depression too long. I've been in worry too long. I've been here too long. My God, you've got to admit it. By now, I should be so much further. My God, I made a lot of bad choices and decisions, but guess what? I'm moving from this place. Hallelujah. I've been here too long, and I've been making excuses. I've been justifying why I am where I am. I've been blaming others about why I am where I am. But tonight, I'm going to be honest with God. I'm going to be honest with myself. And I said, I've been here too long. Hallelujah. There you go. I'm moving from this place. Good. I'm moving from this place. I'm moving out of Lodabar. I'm moving out of Lodabar. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, write those two words down, please. Write those two words down. If you're receiving tonight, tap that screen. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving tonight. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving tonight. My God, Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the greatest teacher we receive from you tonight. We have heard your word. We receive your word. Now help us to apply it. My prayer tonight, I decree and declare that God causes your condition to match your position. I'm speaking to you in there tonight that God causes your condition to match your position. I'm speaking over you tonight, Tasha, that your condition matches your position. Glory, I decree and declare that your condition matches your position. Rosa, your condition matches your position. Lenore, the author, Kiana, I'm praying tonight that your condition matches your position. Felicia, Evangelist Carolyn, Anthony, I'm praying that your position matches your condition. 
my God, that God brings your condition up to your position. Many of us, your condition is way beneath your position. You are royalty, my God, and your condition is not royalty. And Mephibosheth found himself in a condition. There you go. I'm moving. Good, my, you caught it. I'm moving out of Lodabar. Mephibosheth was royal. Mephibosheth was a prince, but he found himself in Lodabar. His condition did not match his position. But I hear the scripture say that the Holy Spirit went and found Mephibosheth and the Holy Spirit brought him out of Lodabar. And I pray by the end of 2020, God brings you out of your Lodabar, out of your place that does not match your position, whatever that is, if it's in your mind, I pray that God bring you out. If it's in your health, I pray that God bring you out. If it's in your circumstance, whatever it is, I pray that God bring you out of that low condition and raise it up to your position in Jesus' name. All right, let me finish this. I got to go. Let me finish this. My God. Watch this. Watch this. If you're receiving tonight, tap that screen. If you're receiving, tap that screen. Okay? So the man was there 38 years. Jesus knew he had been there. Notice what Jesus says. Will thou be made whole? And my question for you tonight, Lenore, will you be made whole? My question to you, Rosa, will you be made whole? My God. Tasha, will thou be made whole? And this is a question that the Holy Spirit is asking us tonight. Do you want to be made whole? Now, it may seem like an obvious question, but I'm telling you, there are a lot of people who don't want to be made whole. They would rather hold on to pity. They would rather hold on to excuses because as long as they're going through, they get attention. But tonight, forget about attention. Forget about pity. I want to be whole. I will be whole. You better be careful because sometimes you can stay in a place because people give you attention. My God. And before long, you stay there so long that you really don't want to come out of your situation. Everybody around you thinks it's obvious. Everybody around you says, man, you, you, uh, I know he, I know she wants, no, no, but Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made whole? My God, because guess what? By now, you should be whole. Come on, it wasn't that simple. You look at the text, you think it's simple. Well, the man is there. Of course he wants to be made whole. But watch what happens. Watch his response. Watch his response. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. Regina, the Lord did not ask him, did he have anybody to put him in the pool? Tasha, why are you answering a question He's not asking. Why do we keep answering stuff that God is not asking? He said to him, Lenore, do you want to be made whole? And the man started making excuses. Write this down. Eliminate all excuses. It is time to eliminate all excuses. Felicia, he did not ask him about any man. He just said, do you want to be made whole? Well, you know, I've been going through this. You know, uh, my 
family left me, you know. He didn't ask him none of that. It's time to eliminate all excuses. He starts talking about nobody will put him in the water. Watch this. He says, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Boy, I, I, I would be whole, but you know, while I start coming, somebody steps in front of me. I would be whole, come on, if somebody talked to me. I would be whole if it wasn't for this. I would be whole if I had somebody to put me in the water. This man has all the excuses. Write this down. Write this down. God is getting rid of every one of your excuses. Tonight, the Lord said, I'm, I'm removing your excuses. Watch this. The Lord is getting, there you go, pity part. That's right. The Lord is getting rid of your excuses. Come on. He's getting rid of your excuses. Watch this. The man starts talking about, I have nobody to put me in. When I try to do this, somebody, watch Jesus respond. Verse 8, Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, watch this, Felicia. He said unto him, rise, Lord have mercy. Come on, what do he say? Rise. Take up your bed. Come on. Come on. What do you say? Rise. Rise. Take up your bed. All right. Here we go. Jesus said, since you got excuses, I'm going to get rid of every one of your excuses. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Three steps. Write this down. A three-step breakthrough. Write this down. God wants to give you, God wants to give me tonight a three-step breakthrough. Write this down. A three-step breakthrough. The Lord said, Rosa, if you want to be made whole, I'm going to show you how to do it. If you want to be made whole, Felicia, I'm going to show you how to do it. Shekinah, if you want to be made whole, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to give you three steps. I'm going to give you three steps for your breakthrough. If you want to be made whole, I'm going to give you three steps. Would you be willing to provide a character witness statement about? Yes. Yes. If you want to be made whole, I'm going to give you three steps, Anthony. Glory, I'm going to give you three steps. Three steps. Okay. Okay. Three-step breakthrough. Watch this. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. All right, watch this. Verse number six, when Jesus saw him lie, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Notice the first step. Here's the first step, Aisha. Rise. Here's the first point, Lenore. Change your position. Come on. The man was laying down. Jesus said, rise. It means change your position. If you want to be made whole, Rosa, Aisha, you have have to change your position. Good? My God. Rise. Get from being on the ground. He was lying down, Felicia, and he said, rise, change your position. Take 
up your bed. Number two, if you want to be made whole, Renair, first you got to change your position. Number two, take up your bed. Now, take authority over the thing that has taken authority over you. My God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Did you hear me? Number one, if you want to be made whole, you got to change your position. Number two, if you want to be made whole, you've got to take authority. Lenore, the man was laying on the bed. Jesus said, instead of laying on the bed, put the bed on you. Did you catch that, Tasha? He said, instead of laying on the bed, put the bed on you. The thing that was over you, now put it up on you. You get over it. It's time to take authority over the things that's been taking authority over you. Take authority over your thoughts. Take authority over your actions. Take authority over everything that is contrary to the will of the Father. Last step. Last step. Step one, step one, rise. That means what? Change your position. He was laying down, now get up, rise. Step two, take authority over the thing that is taking authority over you. Take up your bed. Okay? This is what it's saying also. Close every door. Write that down. Close every door. Shut the door. Close every door. Take up your bed. Close every door. What do you mean, Pastor Bryant? If the man, Lenore, would have left the bed on the ground, Renair, he could always go back to it. Come on. He could always go back to it, Renair. If he left the bed there, he had been there so long, the Lord said, remove everything that reminds you of where you were. My God, remove everything that reminds you of where you were. And some of you, you keep the door cracked because you want to go back. But if you mean business with God, if you want to be made whole, you've got to shut the door. You've got to get rid of everything that reminds you of where you were was. Some of you are still holding on to old letters. Some of you are still holding on to old gifts from people that you've been in relationship with. And God says, tonight is the night that you shut the door. Get rid of the gifts. Get rid of the notes. Get rid of the letters. It's time for you to move on. Hallelujah. Well, you don't know how expensive that gift was. Give it away. Give it away. You don't want nothing to tie you to that person. You don't want nothing to keep you tied to your past. All right, let me get out of here. Number one, rise. Change your position. Number two, take up your bed. Take authority over the thing that has taken authority over you. And then lastly, lastly, walk. Start to make progress. Move forward. Walk. Progress. Move forward. Not run. Walk. One step at a time. Not jump. One step at a time. Make progress. Come on. Make progress. Make progress. Okay? Number one, rise, change your position. Number two, take up your bed. Take authority over the thing that had authority over you. And number three, walk. Begin to make progress. I got to go. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse nine. Thank you, Felicia. Verse nine, the scripture said immediately the man was made whole. Watch this. When you follow these three steps, what he could not do in 38 years, Lenore, he did it 
in 38 seconds. What he could not do, Rosa, in 38 years, he did it in 38 seconds. Tasha, what he could not do in 38 years, he did it in 38 seconds. All because he followed these three steps. And tonight, you may have been battling for years. You may have been struggling for years. But tonight, Regina, if you follow these three steps, what you couldn't do in the past, God will empower you to do it tonight. So I say to each one of you, once again, do you want to be made whole? Well, if your answer is yes, follow these three steps. Number one, rise. Change your position. Number two, take up your bed. Take authority over the thing that has authority over you. And number three, walk. Make progress. Make progress. It is time to make progress. You may not be as far as other people want you to be, but if you start making progress, God will take you where you need to go. Well, I just want to come on to encourage you tonight. And my question again, do you want to be made whole? Well, here is the three-step breakthrough. If you want to be made whole, number one, rise, take up your bed, and walk. If you were blessed tonight, come on, tap that screen as we close out. Come on, tap that screen. <clears throat> if you received this word tonight, I was so blessed. Good. If you were blessed tonight, encourage, strengthen, enlighten. I want you to go back and read John chapter 5. Go back and read it again and ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to some more revelations, some more insight. Go back. There's so much in there. I didn't even begin to touch it like I wanted to. But go back and look over it. Okay. All right. We love you. Uh, shalom. Pray that you have sweet sleep tonight. According to Proverbs 3 and 24, when you lie down, don't be afraid, for your sleep shall be sweet. See you in the morning. The Lord say the same. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Seabury. Uh, you can catch the replay. We're now coming to the close of this message. The name of the message was, Do You Want to Be Made Whole? Love you, Rosa. Love you, Lenore. Love each one of you. Have an awesome night. God bless you. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Over your mind, over your health, over your finances, there is nothing missing, there is nothing broken, there is nothing lacking. In Jesus' name, amen.